let's start in South Florida. <laughs> Where in about an hour from now, a federal judge will weigh whether or not to unseal the affidavit that set off the FBI's unprecedented search of former President Donald Trump's home. It's part of the growing push for transparency in that investigation that could further divide the nation. Trump's legal team, his supporters, want that affidavit made public to ensure that the Justice Department is not abusing its power. But the DOJ contends that the move would compromise its ongoing criminal investigation and could damage national security. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, it's, it's all a lie. Look, I mean, go through this, right? All of this lacks any sort of common sense, logical reasoning. If these documents were so important, if it was all this classified information, it was so important, why wait 18 months? Why would Merrick Garland allegedly had he mulled around for a while trying to figure out if this was the right decision? If these documents were so important, why wait so long? If they were looking for specific information, why was a search warrant so broad to allow for a fishing expedition? And if Merrick Garland was so worried about the integrity of the DOJ and the FBI being questioned, why selectively leak information and not want to release the affidavit, uh. right? This all goes back to what Chuck Schumer said in 2017, that when you take on the intel community, they have six ways from Sunday for going back to you. And now we're being told, as Trump supporters and Republicans, that we need to be the ones toning down the rhetoric. And you have the former CIA director essentially tweeting that Trump supporters and conservatives are worse than ISIS. But essentially what they want to happen is not for you to tone down the rhetoric. They want you to shut up, submit, and not question authority. Yeah. Which is, but we're going to question it. <laughs> which is uh, day of nomenclature cancel. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, my other question, too, Jimmy, is so that was an excellent question. Why the rush? My question is 82 days out from the midterms, if it could have waited this long, why couldn't it wait for that? Well, I think that's a lot of people's frustrations, but we're in a really bad spot here in terms of the affidavit because people do need to know. Okay, I know it's unprecedented to release it in most cases, but it's also unprecedented to raid a former president. It's never happened in the history of our country. America is 246 years old, same age as Joe Biden. And um, we've never had... <laughs> I just look at Kaylee. <laughs> but, we've, but we've never been in a give or take a year, I think. I think he actually has us by a year. But we've never been in a position where a legitimate half the country doesn't trust our Department of Justice, and for good reason. We have seen them falsify documents in the past to go after this guy. So until further notice, a lot of us are well within our rights to feel like this is a political persecution. They can clear that up, but so far they haven't shown any interest in doing so, and I think that's making the tension worse. I, I want to get to this. Wall Street Journal's Dan Henninger wrote this. The U.S. is on edge. Another Trump investigation with the likelihood of a conviction years off will make that worse. Imagine if it goes to court next year or in 2024. Resolving that would be better left to the voters than to an attorney general already distrusted by half the population, which is what you're saying. Yes. So, Emily, imagine we get that close, mm -hmm. and then the voters decide that all of this would have been for nothing because it, it won't come down to Merrick and his crew. Right, and I think that's part of the argument that Senator Graham made when he basically said, look, this former president is so susceptible and is so vulnerable to all of these leaks that end up having nothing rooted in factual basis. So the, the influence potential is really great, and when we're talking about votes, then that has a huge impact. I want to talk about just a finite point in terms of the arguments here about the release of the affidavit, because really the, the courts and, and the judges, they, it's a balancing test for them, right? We know the DOJ has argued, well, this will be injurious to the criminal investigation, uh, but the whole point is that there are other factors that might balance that out. So former President Trump has said, look, I, I want the release. So clearly it's not a factor as to his privacy. The public interest in this is absolutely enormous, again, factoring in those leaks that often are not rooted in any factual basis at all. Um, and I think the whole point is whether public disclosure, disclosure is more or less injurious than the redacted version of it. And it seems to me that in yeah. that way, and look, I'm no judge, but it seems to me that the public interest 100% totally. outweighs their interest in keeping this under wraps for all of those reasons. Well, as usual, Democrats have misguided themselves on what the <laughs> politics of the moment are. Yes, if we have. put all of the legal aside, the politics of the moment say that Trump still has the bully pulpit. Yeah, oh, he certainly does. And, you know, to Emily's point about this scale, there's an anvil sitting on one side of the scale, and that anvil is the American public, who takes immense public interest in this case. Um, you know, on your show, I, I saw Gianno Cald Caldwell bring up the name Jim Comey. Interesting. 
um, and he has a really good point bringing up that name because Jim Comey is no paragon of virtue. Um, he arguably took sensitive information. Uh, he did that defensive briefing at Trump Tower about the Russian dossier. There's a lot of flaws Jim Comey has that I would argue led to distrust of the FBI. One thing I think he did right, and he got a lot of criticism on the left from it, is the way he came out very publicly on the Hillary Clinton email case, very publicly. And here's what he said. This was at the close of the investigation. I'm going to include more detail about our process than I ordinarily would. Why? Because I think the American people deserve those details in a case mm -hmm. of intense public interest. And he listed the 30,000 emails Hillary handed over, 110 emails with classified information, eight top secret, 36 secret, eight confidential. I'm making the point he listed in excruciating detail right. the details of that case and went on to say, while the DOJ is going to make a final decision here, uh, although there's evidence of poten potential violations of statute, our judgment is no reasonable prosecutor would bring a case. To his credit, he laid out the exact rationale for why he didn't bring yeah. the case. I, I don't agree with that rationale, but that was his rationale. He laid out details, and the American public could walk away and make their own political judgment as they did in 2016. Mm -hmm. Lisa, how much do you think that people look at this case with, and you mentioned the word leak, which was perfect, <laughs> right? With all that gets leaked, how much do you think the American public really believes our Attorney General Merrick Garland that, that this would be injurious to his case? Because so much has leaked all, we, we know so much already. The affidavit just says, put the square peg over by this one. <laughs> like it just, yeah, it, it gives you some of the why and, and ties things together. But we know the what. I think one of the best things that President Trump did for our country was roll back the curtain on how corrupt our own government is. And I think Americans' eyes have been awakened. They've been awakened during the faulty FBI, the crossfire hurricane, which was a political witch hunt against President Trump. They were awake Rock during and COVID. Mm -hmm. And seeing the abuse of government with the lockdowns, people are awake and they are wise. And trust is earned. Respect is earned. The FBI and the DOJ do not deserve our trust. They do not deserve our respect. And if they want transparency, if they want to be honest, if they want, if they want that trust and that respect earned back, be transparent, be open, release all the information, and don't target former presidents because there's a reason we haven't done this because this goes to Latin American countries and these countries where they put their political opponents in jail. And that's the direction we're heading in as a country. Under concealment. That's the whole thing, too, yeah. that I see that, that theme is that this, this cloak of opacity, that somehow that that is the greatest thing that needs protection. But to your point, all these other factors we've been mentioning blows that out of the water. And yet the government, this corrupt faction of the government, is so fixated on keeping it from it. Their information hoarding, for some reason, perhaps because it's just going to be a little man behind the curtain instead of Oz. So is it just me, or do I sort of see a theme here? I, I'm not saying that these things are one is tied connected to the other one and two, but they certainly live in the same cultivated garden. Uh, 87,000 more IRS oh. agents to collect information on all of us, mm -hmm. but you're asking for the transparency from the agencies that our trust has been lost in. Mm -hmm. Those things are happening in the same garden. Oh, yeah. And Weeds of the same garden. Oh, uh, quickly. And the FBI is making it worse. I mean, what did Merrick Garland do last week? He got out there and said, hey, stop calling the FBI names. And then they went out and leaked information. This is like saying, don't call me an alcoholic. If anybody needs me, I'll be at the bar. <laughs> like, come on, Merrick Garland. Yeah. Come on. Oh, no. That's Although, hilarious. let me know when you're going. It'll be fun. Hey. <laughs> I mean, you didn't get any pushback. Well, yeah. I know. Where, where, where are we going, guys? I love this crowd. I love this crowd. So one more on this. What happens if and when President Trump releases the tape of the FBI agents as they're carrying out their raid? Now, we, we know mm -hmm. that nobody wants anyone to be put into harm's way. Yeah, and, and no matter how you feel about this, there may be faces on that tape, so on and so forth. But the sheer information of what it looked like then becomes even more of a, a political football here. It does. Um, I think he should release it. I think the American people deserve to see the former, the home of a former president raided. Uh, they asked him to take down those security cameras and, and turn them off. He didn't. Good for him and his team. Um, but at the same time, you can call, as he has, for peace and bringing down the temperature. No one wants to see violence in this country um, and be explicit on that point, but at the same time, have transparency. There's a way to do both. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.